Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you what I think about silent effects drywall. Uh, this is made by Certainteed, and this is a drywall that's on the market that claims to help you with sound isolation, with soundproofing, uh, by having a specialty drywall that will apparently be way better than regular drywall. So I'm going to break down the differences between silent effects drywall, what it is, how it works. I'm going to talk about a comparison with regular drywall with soundproofing. And then finally, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the cost comparison between the two uh, so that you can make an informed decision before you buy. All right, if that sounds good, stick around. Right before I jump in, I'm just gonna let you know that I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. You can check it out. It's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching. I just give it all away. My goal on this channel is to just give you all the information you need to build a soundproof home recording studio. So that said, you can check it out at www.soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on should you use silent effects drywall to soundproof? All right, first question is what in the world is silent FX drywall. Well, it falls into a category of other drywalls that I've done reviews on before, like uh, Quiet Rock is another example, and they're all pretty much the same thing. They feature a 5 8 inch or half eighth inch dense drywall uh, with a layer in the middle that is a damping layer. And on the website, you can see here in their brochure that it says that it's a viscoelastic polymer, which is a fancy word for that damping layer. Viscoelastic polymers uh, are similar to green glue and mass loaded vinyl. So don't get freaked out by this like term. Uh, and in fact, you know, most uh, structural items like rubber act as a viscoelastic polymer. So there's nothing really fancy about that. I want to say too that Certainty, which makes silent FX, is owned by St. Gobain, which also bought up Green Glue. So there's some connection there between all these companies kind of selling the same or similar products under one umbrella of St. Gobain. So being a, a uh, informed consumer, you can kind of understand how everything's sort of related here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this elusive viscoelastic polymer. I did a little research and I try, was looking for a legitimate source and I found one with actually a uh, graduate level paper in math and engineering um, from a university and I have the link in the description below if you want to check out that paper. But basically these students said that a viscoelastic polymer is, and I will read this to you because I can't memorize it, a damping layer usually made of rubber or rubber-like polymer represents hysteresis under a dynamic load. Some of the mechanical energy is absorbed and dissipated as heat due to the internal friction of the molecular chains. So in plain English, uh, hysteresis, uh, I believe, is just the ability of the material to vibrate and move in multiple three-dimensional directions. And the basic idea here is that this material, because it gets moving in a certain way by the sound waves, it actually converts the sound wave ultimately into heat uh, from the friction of the molecular chains. And I like the molecular chains part because that to me goes all the way down to the molecules of what's actually happening uh, with our material. So that's important to understand. Um, another thing is that this viscoelastic polymer is nothing new. You can get rubber. You can put rubber between your walls. You can put green glue between your walls. You can put mass loaded vinyl between your walls. And it's all doing essentially the same physical thing. All right. So now that we've talked a little bit about the science behind this, I want to talk about the comparison of silent effects drywall on a double wall system compared to what I usually recommend, which is just two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on each side of our double wall system. So the first thing I'm going to show is something I show a lot on my channel, which is this diagram of a typical double wall system. If you look to the far right, it gets an STC rating of 63. We have two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the outside wall, an air gap in the middle with insulation, and then you have two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the inside wall. And it's a very simple and beautiful design and it works really well. An STC rating of 63 is plenty good for most home recording studios. 
So that said, let's look at what the silent effects would do if we were to use it. And I looked in their documents and I found this diagram, which was the closest that I could get to the exact same design as my typical double wall system that I recommend for my clients. And so with this one, they recommend getting an STC rating of 62, which is very close to an STC rating of 63. That's respectable. And they use one layer of 5 8 inch type X drywall, which means any layer, any type of 5 8 inch drywall. And then the same air gap, one inch air gap, same insulation in the middle. And then they recommend using another layer of 5 8 inch drywall. And finally, their specialty made silent effects drywall on that inside outer facing layer towards the room. I guess you could go either way. It doesn't really matter where that silent effects drywall goes on that inside wall. The main difference here is they're using three sheets of drywall versus four, like in the design we looked at before. So potentially you could save in material costs and labor, and we'll talk about that more in a second here. So the question you've probably been wanting to know this whole video, and you're like, Wilson, stop blabbering, uh, essentially is what does it cost and how does it compare to the cost of not using silent effects drywall? We know that if we use silent effects drywall, we can get roughly the same STC rating, but I will say it is worse. Uh, the silent effects drywall that they recommended at STC 62 is worse than an STC rating of 63. So I'm already like, okay, you're going to get worse results than using two layers of drywall. So the only benefit would be if it costs less or was easier to install. So let's take a look at that. So I did some quick research on the internet and I found one retailer who was selling silent effects drywall for $73.01 per four foot by eight foot sheet. Now that's very expensive for dry drywall, but it's actually around the same amount for competitors like Quiet Rock and other uh, soundproof specific drywalls out there. Now, when I looked at Home Depot or Lowe's, which are our big stores here in the United States, they were selling regular 5 8 inch drywall for $17.87 per 4 by 8 foot sheet. So a very big difference in price. But now let's look at our wall design because we know we're gonna have to use more of the regular 5 8 inch drywall. So if we build the silent effects double wall design where we use three sheets of 5 8 inch drywall and one of them is a silent effects drywall, the total cost will be $126.62 for a four by eight foot section of that wall. Now a double wall without any silent effects drywall, remember just doing our two layers of 5 8 inch and two layers of 5 8 inch, so a total of four layers of 5 8 inch drywall would be $71.48. So significantly cheaper for that same square footage of wall. And again, remember you get better results as well. Just to make this more clear, the difference in price is $55.14 between the two walls, which comes out to a cost per square foot of $1.72 more per square foot for the silent effects drywall wall. Now, in my opinion, you would have to really look at, okay, is it gonna save you that much more time by installing a one less sheet of drywall on your outside wall? versus paying so much more for getting less soundproofing in the end. And this is where I always think these products fall short. So in conclusion, I would never recommend Silent Effects, Quiet Rock, or any of these products to one of my clients because I think it's a gimmick or it's used in commercial situations where they don't want to build a double wall, they want to save square footage. And I'll talk about that in a second because I think some of you are like, well, what if I want to build a regular wall and use silent effects? Can I get great results anyways? And my answer to that would be for my home recording studio people, don't do it because you're going to be using a double wall system or you're going to be using acoustic clips and hat channels. And all of that is going to get you much better results than just building a normal stud wall without decoupling your drywall. So keep that in mind. So that's why I don't recommend this. Now, for those of you who are still like, but I really want to believe that this is worth the money because uh, it will get me results and save time. Uh, let's look at this one last diagram that CertainTeed had, which basically shows the difference between a normal stud wall. So two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on both sides of it will give you an STC rating of 55. If you were to use the silent effects drywall instead, it will give you an STC rating of 57. 
Now, that's pretty good, I would say, for just a normal wall, and it could save you on square footage, albeit just five eighths of an inch, which, you know, that could be worth it in your design. Um, and it could potentially save you in labor because it's just one less uh, layer of drywall to put up. So that's up for you to decide. But for all of you people building soundproof home recording studios, you don't want to build this normal type of wall anyway. So for hospitals, schools, hotels, things like that, where they're just trying to, you know, try to get that STC 55 rating maybe for codes, I get the reason for using silent effects or quiet rock. But again, the cost is just outrageously more expensive. So for that, you know, cost benefit analysis is what we have to do. Um, but I hope this video was helpful. I hope this lesson was helpful for you out there. I've heard of clients wanting to use silent effects. I always try to steer them away from it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's this kind of idea of like, oh, it's so easy. It's one sheet of drywall that supposedly stops sound in its tracks. And there's a lot of things out there on the market that are claiming to do that. But when we look at the science, we look at the ratings side by side, we realize there's a lot more similarities and you're not getting necessarily much better results. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I appreciate it. And uh, like I said before, if you're on this journey of trying to build a soundproof room or a soundproof home recording studio, check out my free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. I look forward to seeing you all next week and thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.